Guys, my name is Ankush Gaurav and I welcome you to Contu series. In the earlier tutorial, we learned the concept of a bidirectional many to one, one to many mapping in a Hibernate application. Only thing I missed telling you was the map by property which we mentioned in the student address class. In this tutorial, I'm going to tell everything about a map by property along with knowing the concept of a awning and a non-awning site in a Hibernate application. I'll take help of a demo which we developed in the previous tutorial. Here I established a many-to-one relationship in the student class and then I established a one-to-many relationship in a student address class. But the point to note here is when I already established a many-to-one mapping of student class with the student address class then what was the need to establish the relationship in the reverse order? The only need was to have a navigational access from student address site 2. That is, whenever you perform some operation on a student address object, then Hibernate should also perform some auto operation on the related student objects too. Now I'm going to tell a very important point to note in a bidirectional mapping. Although here in the demo we have established many to one and one to many mapping in two classes that is student and student address classes but the mapping task is actually owned by the student class all right let me explain in detail what i'm really talking about with this statement so now i'm putting here a statement create in the hibernate configuration file so now when i run the application hibernate will first create the tables from the Hibernate classes in the database and then it will insert records in it. I've already deleted the student and student address tables from the database which I created myself in the previous demo. Now ideally, when I run the application, Hibernate should itself create these two tables in the database and then should happily insert records in it. Let's run the application. Yes, it created the two tables and happily inserted records in both the tables in the database. Now I'll simply remove the mapped by property in the student address class and run the same application. Oops, what Hibernate has done? This time, Hibernate has produced all earlier output, but along with it, it created a third table also. So what's this third table, which this time Hibernate generated when we removed mapped by property from student address class. Actually, this is the mapping table which Hibernate has generated. And by looking at this table, you can tell how a record present in student table is linked with a record present in the student address table. So now after running the application without map by property in the student address table and looking at the output, two questions come into the mind. When already Hibernate is having a mapping column in the student table, which is doing the mapping task, then what's the need of one more mapping thing, in this case, this third table for conveying the same information? I hope you understood the problem. Why to have two ways of linking student records with student address records in the same project? Either use this column present in the student table or use this third table to do the mapping task. And that's where the map by property comes into the picture. When you have a bidirectional mapping, you will always need to specify which side Hibernate should consider for mapping the two tables. Otherwise, Hibernate will consider both sides for it. After reading the contents of student class, Hibernate included a column student address, address ID in the student class for mapping student records with student address records. And after reading the contents of student address class, Hibernate created a third table for mapping student records with student address records. Now, 
If you want Hibernate to do the mapping task just once and not twice, then you explicitly tell it to Hibernate using the map by property. If you mention map by property in the student address class, then Hibernate does the mapping task based on the information in student class. And that's why when we ran application with map by property in the student address class, Hibernate did not include a third table for a mapping task and just included the student address address ID column for it. Guess with this demo, you now know what an awning side and a non-awning side means in a Hibernate application. In the case when you establish a bidirectional mapping between two Hibernate classes, you will need to explicitly tell Hibernate which side it should consider for performing the mapping task using a map by property. The side which you want to consider for performing a mapping task is in general known as an awning side and the other side is known as a non-awning side. The side where you mention map by becomes the non-awning side and Hibernate considers other side for performing the mapping task. Guys, there are many concepts which may confuse you like these. For any of these things, if you have a little confusion which you want me to clarify in any respect, I welcome all of your queries, feedback and comments below the video or you can send me an email on this ID. Please like the video if it really helped you and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Contour Series and I'm going to catch you in my next tutorial that is a many-to-many -many mapping in a Hibernate application.